Ladies and gentlemen, it is my absolute pleasure to bring to the virtual stage. Uh, we're going to talk to the stars of animation, and we're going to start off. She's already here, so let's just jump on with her. Miss Olivia Dabo, hello. Hello, and Yay! how are you guys doing today? Oh, my God. Absolutely fantastic. I'm such an Invader Zim fan, so to have you here is wonderful. Uh, Attack is one of my favorite characters, so that definitely works. Let's bring out some more folks uh, from Futurama. She plays Amy Wong. Let's hear from Miss Lauren Tom. Hello. Oh, wait. Do I have to? Do I have to? Yeah, click, the, click the thing to bring your video back. And you, okay. there you are. Hello. <laughs> there we go. No challenge. Hi, I like everybody. It. I love it. I love it. Hi, We're going to keep hi. this fun going. From the regular show, he plays the voice of Rigby. Let's hear for William Salyers, uh, a.k.a. Bill, for this one. This is friendly. This is friendly. Bill, how are we doing, right. man? Just great, man. It's it's. I'm thrilled to be here, Victor. I love it. I love it. Thank you so very much for joining us. From Shimmer and Shine, okay, she plays Princess Samira. Hello. Let's hear for Nikki Suhu. Hey! Everybody, thanks for having me. Hello, hello, hello. And last but certainly not least, from Steven Universe, does the voice of Pearl and so many iterations therein. Let's hear for Dee Dee Magno Hall. Hello! Hi! Hey, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Hi, everybody. <laughs> listen, listen, this is amazing. Okay, let me just tell you, when I say that we have people from all over the world watching, I got to give a shout out to all our fans that are on right now. Okay, so we're talking from Canada, uh, London, Europe, Texas, Cali, Washington, Oregon, New Jersey, Massachusetts, France, wow. Michigan, Wisconsin, Indonesia. Okay, we got oh people gosh. from Indonesia watching amazing. right now. Amazing. This is fantastic. First and foremost, how is everybody doing? How is your new year? Is everyone doing okay? Staying safe and sane. Thank you. Okay, okay. Okay. Thank God. Yes. New say, energy say, for 2021. I can feel it, and I and uh, I just feel like it's onwards and upwards in the best way yes. from here on out. Well, yes. Victor, you know, you say safe and sane like it's a package deal, and I just well, want I'm to hoping. point out that <laughs> you know, uh, you can... uh, definitely safe. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. I mean. If there's... <laughs> You can get yeah, some same from Amazon right now. They're still delivering that right now. Yeah, well, aren't that's they? great. Okay, yeah, good, good. Yeah. Just double checking. Just double checking. Um, okay, so I'm a huge animation fan. I adore it. Uh, it. It shaped me as a child, and I love being able to be an adult who enjoys it even more. So we're going to start off with this classic question: Are you a fan of animation? And who was your favorite animated character growing up? Uh, yeah, oh that's my gosh. right. That's right. Um, I would. Well, I. Uh, I um I loved Fat Albert and <laughs> yes! I, I mean that that's what I'm talking about. That Fat was like, Albert. For me, no one the, says that. That's amazing, Olivia. I love that. All of the characters on that show, I think, really just defined a whole new platform for animation. Um, and I just think you know it, it's timeless. It's classic. So that that's my favorite. I love the hey hey hey. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey. Hey. <laughs> nice. My favorite was, um, because I was a bit of a spacey kid, okay. I loved um, the Jetsons. Hey. Oh, yes! To do with the future and in space and a retro, you know, retro. <laughs> dog. Love dogs. That's not prophetic at all. You like future stuff? Really? Uh, no. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. I'd have to go with the Simpsons only because that was like our family show. Like yes. every dinner. And it just reminds me of being with my family and everyone just watching together. Oh my God, I love that. I love that. Dee Dee, what about you? Uh, I grew up watching all of the Disney animation movies. And then I also, uh, I remember Strawberry Shortcake and the Gummy Bears. Yes, classic. Yes. Absolute classics, yes. Bill? You know, and I, I'm going to be like the expected guy and say I, I grew up with Bugs Bunny and uh, not there we you know, go. The, the, original, <laughs> the original Bugs, but he had been, you know, he'd been on the air for like 30 years by that time. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like never got old. And I was uh, I was able to appreciate it as a kid and see the silly stuff and laugh at that. And then my mother would be making me breakfast for school, and she'd be like, <laughs> and I'd say, what's so funny about that? <laughs> she'd say, never mind, never You'll mind. You'll find kid. out when you're older. <laughs> yeah, I'd say, yeah, exactly. And that was something that I really appreciated was the, the kind of writing in animation that could span uh, a wide uh, generational uh, volume. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. Um, okay, so just to give a quick fan shout out, uh, Mixel Fan Wan ninety five says we have Tack Pearl Rigby number three, Amy Wong. This is fantastic, and I'm fanboying right now. So <laughs> you guys are creating so many feels already. This is this is absolutely fantastic. Um, okay, so <clears throat> here's the thing. We have different styles of animation present right now. Okay, all your different you know styles of, of shows, whether they are a little bit more kid centric, whether they are traditional two D animation, more three D animation. Um, here's here's the biggest misconception of animated series is that it's strictly for kids. But what is the another misconception that people have about animated series? Um, that they can't be deep or really move you. That because, is so true. So like in that in that scene in Futurama where the dog is. Oh, no, oh you, you yeah. talked about it so early. Oh, it was. <laughs> you, can't, you can't just bring, you can't just bring that up right away. That's you gotta ease into that one. Well, every time that gets me, and then oh. put in a little plug. Um, you know, because we're all trying to look for little pockets of joy these days. I'm not in this, but the movie um, Soul that's on uh, the Pixar. Yes, in- Disney Plus right now. Disney Plus try to catch that because it's really uplifting. Yes. And so it, when I saw that, I felt like, well, maybe I, maybe I do contribute something to the world with oh. animation because yes. I kind of feel a little bit like a bun, but because um, <laughs> it's not, you know, like cancer research or something that seems more serious. But I think that, um, but it, but can go deeper. And also, I guess, just adding. Um, some joy to people's lives is. You know, I'd, like, I'd like to piggyback really quickly on what Lauren said about being able to go deep with animation, mm-hmm. and I'll just bring up BoJack Horseman. Oh, and my favorite! Great one. Great one. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, I mean, it, 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 they can. There's something about the anthropomorphism mm-hmm. that lets them deal with the heaviest stuff. And, you know, I don't even know if I could stand watching it if it was coming out of regular human mouths, you know? <laughs> That's so true. There is a truth that you're able to accept, and it's that much easier. And, yeah, yeah no, I agree. I agree. I can't tell you how many times I've met so many fans of Steven Universe just talking about how many feels they feel watching yes. that show and so many roller coaster rides of emotions that you can feel just watching that show and it's also fun and beautiful to look at and the music is is uh is moving as well so i think that absolutely uh there's emotion um in in animation I and i think I a lot of relatability even like did you guys watch the animation bow uh, yes yes it was so good. <laughs> dumpling and and i think Beautiful. that it's just it's it really tells about Asian American culture or uh, Asian culture in, in such a relatable way, but yet it's, it would have been different if they had used humans actually like for, right. for that. It like you conveyed a lot of what needed to be said um, with in a cute way, essentially. Right. <laughs> That's absolutely amazing. And, and so very true. I, I'm going to jump back into some fan questions before I really get into my other ones. Um, so Evelyn Grundy, who I, I hope I said that correctly, who is tuning in from Indonesia. Amazing. Uh, wants to know your origin stories for being voice actors. How did you get into voice acting? And, and Nikki, do you want to start? Sure. Cause I actually have a cra- to me, it's a crazy story because I have come more so from the acting world uh, of being on like film and TV as myself, not in animation. Um, But when I first started in acting, I got a voiceover agent, Imperium 7, and they just so lovingly picked me up. I auditioned for 10 years before I booked anything. Oh my God. And I'm like, these boys? I cannot believe these people still believe in me. <laughs> like, I couldn't believe they supported me for so long. And then I finally like got in the door and then that kind of opens up a lot more doors once once you're in. But yeah, it, it was it was kind of crazy for me because I just kept trying. And mind you, you know, voiceover auditions, you're going in at least two to five times a week. Mm-hmm. And I'm going for 10 years and not booking anything. And I'm like, oh gosh, is this for me? People are like, are you sure? You still want to do this? Like, <laughs> giving me the opportunity? I'm going to try. I'm going to, I'm either going to get better or I'm going to make the connections to get there eventually. That's right. That's right. 
Olivia, what I'm about you? I'm going to jump in here because, Nikki, I'm also with Imperium 7, who I love. I think they're amazing. I think we're so blessed to be with them. I think they really get, um, you know, artists, both actors, because they represent people theatrically as well as for voiceovers and mm -hmm. commercials. Um, but, uh, you know, I think what I find interesting, you're also an actress, as am I. Um, in front of the camera, I have actually found that voice acting has made me a better act actor. Uh, and I think reason being is that when you take an animation character, let's say you have an audition, um, you have to, there's no visual uh, right. there, that you're not in front of the camera. So you're literally taking audio, your voice, and you're trying to define a character literally just with your voice. So mm -hmm. you, you there's something, there's some kind of, um, you're just picking up on the local osmosis of the character if they give you a visual of the way the character looks and usually that's temporary, it could be subject to change. And I think it's a real, it's a wonderful creative artistic challenge to just get inside that character and, and bring it to life just with your voice. Um, and then the animators will take that and sometimes, you know, enhance the way they see the character. When I was doing, uh, playing Luminara on Clone Wars, Star Wars, uh, and Jane on Tarzan and Jane, um, and even Tack and Invader Zim, you know, I'm sure you guys um, have the same situation where the animators are sometimes in the room with you. So when they cast you, it's, a cr it's an incredible opportunity for this kind of like collective uh, creation for them to pick up on your body language, your mm -hmm. expressions, and and really bring the character to life as much as you are in the audio way. I love that. I love that. So I have to say that amazing. I am also with Imperium Seven, and clearly, they are the powerhouse agency in Los yes. Angeles. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I, think I'm not, also with them. I was going to say, am I the yeah. only one that's not with Imperium? <laughs> What do I need to talk to? What do I need to? Okay. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about this later. We'll talk about this later. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lauren, talk to tell, tell me about your origin with this. Oh, okay. Um, so I started out as, you know, acting in, in theater and film mm -hmm. and TV also. And uh, you're sweet. Um, and I just, my first audition for the, an, an animated show was uh, King of the Hill. Oh. And I just wow. went in as like I would for any audition and, um, there were like a ton of people in the room with a microphone there. And uh, I, that was like Nikki said, once you get your first one, you're kind of in. Right. And then you kind of get passed around. So, so <laughs> I think it's just breaking in <laughs> that first one. And so that was just such a gift that dropped in my lap because it, Love you it. know, it was such a wonderful uh, group of people and it lasted a long time. And, I miss everybody. Yeah. Oh, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It was a great show. Yes. Oh, amazing show. Yes. Oh. Like, seriously. Yeah. Bill, how did you get started? I, I kind of fell into it accidentally. Um, a buddy of mine, uh, Scott Adsit, who is Baymax and Big Hero 6, mm -hmm. and he, big second city guy if you're an improv fan. Uh, he and I met when I was doing some theater here in LA with his, at that time, girlfriend. And uh, he was pitching a show to Adult Swim called Moral Oral, <laughs> and um, uh, yes, it's it's uh, it's dark comedy. Yes, I'd say. yes. Uh, but uh, he asked if I would come in. He said so they they had the whole first season recorded, but they weren't happy with one of the voices, and he asked me if I would come in to read for it. And I knew enough about animation and the voiceover world to know that I would have zero chance at getting <laughs> getting a role like that. Jokes on uh, you. <laughs> yeah, I thought I, you know, I thought this is, you know, Scott's he's trying to do me a solid, be a nice guy. Right. I was getting I was getting ready to go do some theater somewhere out of town, and I was in a hurry, and and I was like, well, I don't want to be a jerk about it. I'll just go in and read. And his partner Dino Stamatopoulos said. Uh, well, but you but you've done stuff like this before, right? And I was so unaffected by it all. I was like, not really. You know, I just, <laughs> and uh, and so I wasn't at all nervous. And I did the reading and I booked the role. And then then with that, I was able to to get I seven and uh, and then that led to the audition for regular show. Oh my God, that's awesome! That's awesome, Didi. What about you? 
Um, I started also with television and film mm-hmm. uh, first. I did some theater and um, and when I was in New York, I was connected with um, a jingles agency or management. So I started out doing jingles and then uh, was thinking, well, I, I, I love singing mm-hmm. and uh, I've always wanted to, you know, be in, a, in, a, in an animated film, voice a, car- a cartoon character. And then if that character is able to sing, even, even better. better. And so uh, when I came out to Los Angeles to pursue more television and film, um, I actually ended up doing more theater and uh, stage stage shows. Um, but I uh, was connected with Imperium 7 uh, through my theatrical agent at the time. And I, I, I auditioned for, for many, many, many television shows, cartoons, car- uh, commercials, what have you. And I just wasn't booking anything for a really long time. It felt like thousands and thousands. And then um, the role of Pearl in Steven Universe came up and uh, I actually auditioned for Sadie and Pearl at the same time. And then, uh, you know, a couple of audi- uh, more auditions coming uh, later after that, I, I finally booked my, my first uh, uh, big you know, show, television show, cartoon, and it's been such a huge blessing in my life. I'm still waiting to be passed around. <laughs> <laughs> It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. <laughs> but hey, I am loving, loving that Steven Universe still exists in the yes. world. Yes. Uh, that there are so many people who love and embraced that show. I'm so grateful. Um, most of, if not all, my followers on Instagram are from Steven Universe. So I thank you very much, Rebecca yes. Sugar. Yes. <laughs> Yes, indeed. One of the best theme songs in all of animation. Let me just throw that out there. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. It's so true. So you all have amazing like resumes under your belt. What does it mean for you to be recognized for your voice? Is that something different? Is that something unique? And is there a funny story that you might have of somebody realizing audially who you are? Bill, I'm going to start with you. Okay. Well, you know, the, the, the funny thing about it, uh, to me is that there are many, many people who don't consider voice acting, acting. I'll fight them all. Point them out. (laughs) Just point at them. I like you, Victor. I got you. Uh, No, you know what? You know, uh, uh, I was with my wife getting our uh, taxes done uh, several years ago uh, with a new accountant. And she was, she was saying, well, your, your work must be so interesting. I said, yeah, it really really is. And her husband was home. They're working in another house. And she called in the next room. Hey, honey, Bill is a voice actor, and it's way better than acting. <laughs> uh, I, it's yeah. still acting. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. We don't just come up with a silly voice. Right. Uh, uh, but, you know, I, I, I am not recognized for my voice that much. It's one of the things that I love is that I can out myself or not. You know, okay. I can... I can I could be at a uh, back in. I, I'm so old. I remember when we used to do these live with other people in the room, and um, and and uh, it's it's really something to be in a hotel lobby, and talking to a waiter or whatever and signing your name. Nobody bothers you. Nobody knows you. And then you go across the street, and you're a celebrity. You know. And I, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I kind of like that. No, that is nice. That's that's very nice. But how does no one hear you? Like, I hear Rigby with every syllable that you say. Like, I don't know. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. I I don't know. I I think I think the the visual context says Mm -hmm. so much to our brains. You know, it's, it's I really loved meeting like really little fans like like three like like three, four, five years old because they'd be like. No, you're not a raccoon. <laughs> oh, you got me. You I'm got not, me. I'm, not, you're like, I, I, I'm, I'm a kid. I'm not stupid. You are not a raccoon. <laughs> like, they don't they don't make that leap yet. Which I, like, I kind of did. But, but I am Rigby. I swear. Like, mm, <laughs> no, are no. you? Turn around. Let me of, see you. You're kind of furry, but you're not furry enough. <laughs> you're too tall. No, you're too tall. That's what it is. That's what it is. Olivia, what about you? I mean, you've been on, on you know, television movies for uh, a wonderful career. How many people actually just hear you and know who you are? I, okay, well, that's a, an interesting question. I think the biggest discovery that I've found about people who follow my work is is the Tat character from Invader Zim. Um, because she's so insane and she's <laughs> such a kind of 
you know, I got Wheaties for everybody. <laughs> you know, he's just like, you know, where are the people got come up to me and go, so where are the weenies? <laughs> I mean, where are they? I mean, you gotta have them, you know. You gotta, you gotta have those. This is them. you now. This is what we And expect. I'm like, yeah, I'll be right back. <laughs> Call and the police. They're wanting the weenies. Here. What do I start with? Um, so I think um, because that ca- that show and then the film that, that we did for Netflix that just came out, it's just such an amazing thing about that show because it's 20 years ago that we did this show. It was on Nickel- Nickelodeon and it was, it was always seen as being very ahead of its time. But the following uh, with people who were kids at that age, now 20 years later, and then they've had kids and then their kids like it. Mm-hmm. So those are the mo- most insane devoted fans, I think, from what I've experienced as a voiceover actor. Then Luminara from Clone Wars, I think it's more like my own voice. So people have stopped me and said, are you the voice of Luminara in awesome. you know, Rise and Fall of Skywalker or Clone Wars? Um, that's the thing I'm sort of associated with currently mo- the most. But um, yeah, uh, I think I answered the question. You did. You totally did. No, you absolutely did. Absolutely. Lauren, what about you? Have you had any fun experiences of people recognizing your voice? Well, some of the sweetest tweets that I get or on social media are, you know, I can't believe that's the same person in Ghost of Tsushima as Kid Thinks or Mind Blown. Because I mean, number that's two, strange. Yeah, and then I like Ghost of Tsushima was like way down here. <laughs> But there, every once in a while, I get one that'll say something like, like this one gal was watching Supernatural and said, I knew that was Amy from Futurama. And I was like, really? Because I was really trying to lower my voice. <laughs> <laughs> that's studying. That's fandom. That's what that is. But maybe, you know, anyway, it's still, you know, the basic unit still kind of comes through anyway. I love that. I love that. Nikki, what about you? Well, interestingly, I think that my normal voice is pretty distinct Mm -hmm. Um, that like whenever I walk into a normal room or people will hear me on TV, like as uh, in front of the camera and be Mm -hmm. like, Oh, she's on. And like, know that I'm there. But most of the voiceover stuff that I book is not my normal voice actually. So for like star Wars resistance, I play, you know, a six year old and then for shimmer and shine, I, well, also my clientele there is, uh, or, you know, my, they're, they're like six, like Your audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, so their mom will be like, this is princess Samira. And then they'll just be like, you know, like, so yeah. confused. Yeah. or I'll record like little things for them. And then they'll just be so excited. But if they see me, yeah, they're confused. Cause they're like, you don't look like that person. Your hair's the wrong yeah. color. That's what it is. <laughs> wrong color yeah. hair. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, interestingly, people can hear my normal voice when I'm normal, but not through animation. Wow, even wow. if I do it for them, even if I'm like, um, shimmer and shine, welcome to my palace. You know, they're like, mm, no, that's not you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you're a fan of the show. Oh, that's cute. That's cute. Uh, you, yeah. You good impression. You're like, no, 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 that's really me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's I can amazing. literally like play it and then do it. And they're like, no. Nah. I've got, you know, I've gotten the same thing. I've gotten the same where people don't believe that I'm me. And I'm like, if I could pretend to be someone, you think it would be William Salyer? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yes. Uh, all right. All right. Yes. Because I'm, you're I'm thinking like I'm thinking like Martin Sheen. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you, you're you up there. You're out there. That's all, all, right, that's all, right. all I'm going to okay. say. Yes. All right, yes. then. Uh, uh, before I get to you, Didi, I want to give this this love letter here. Uh, Kajda Chan says, hey, oh, I'd love to thank Didi for literally living Pearl's character. Uh, she's taught me a lot and helped me to find myself. Didi does such an amazing <gasps> job voice acting, and she's also a really sweet human being. So Aww. that's just a, a bundle of roses uh, that I have to share right there. Oh, thank yes. you. That yes. was very sweet. I know, right? <laughs> so... Is there a time where you've been, you know, uh, recognized by just your voice? 
Well, I thought of I thought of this one time. Uh, my voice on uh, as Pearl is very similar to my natural voice. It's just mm -hmm. sort of an exaggerated, more emotional voice. Uh, but I remember going to pick up my oldest son uh, at middle school, and I had to bring my little guy, my youngest, um, with me because he was not yet a school age. But uh, I was. I was in the office waiting for my oldest son to come. He was getting called from the, you know, from the, the attendance room. And my little guy was climbing the furniture. And so I had to reprimand him. I mean, you know, he was climbing the furniture in the school. And so I, I turned around and I just said, I, 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 I said, get down from there. Do not climb the, do not climb the furniture or something. And, I, and my voice was sort of, you know, excited. And not two seconds later, you know, one young gentleman turned around and said, and my, my back was to him. And he says, excuse me, are you Dee Dee Magno Hall? And, and I was I was shocked. Wow. First of all, I was in the middle school. I had n not a stitch of makeup on. My hair was pulled back and I was wearing sweats. And I'm like... Uh, yes. Well, would I admit this right now? <laughs> I, was like, I was like, yes. And he goes, oh, I love Steven Universe. Uh, you know, I love you as Pearl. He says, can I get a selfie? <laughs> so I was like, of course. But that really threw me. I, I was not expecting that in my son's middle school. So that really was a, I mean, a nice... Of the that's a that's a huge compliment and it, it really is such a perfect you know age demographic to to hear you on a regular basis um okay so animation can be one of the most inclusive i'm sorry i said you just need to yell at your kid more <laughs> yes yes and then everybody's like that's pearl that's pearl I love her. oh no i don't want them to associate pearl with the yelling all the time <laughs> Pearl is all about the order, though. That's what it is. She needs everything to be in an order. See, there it is. Uh, <laughs> animation can be one of the most inclusive pop cultural art forms, uh, but there's been a recent critique about using non-direct representative uh, actors for roles. Do you think that that opens up more opportunities to be creative, uh, or is there uh, an unfortunate side that that might bring about? Would you would you be limited in if you only had roles that specifically looked act like you do i mean i well, i think that that is one of the most amazing things about animation is the fact that people can traverse age and race and mm -hmm. gender and species like literally people are playing aliens and you know animals and stuff like right. that um, I do support representation in cast in general, mm -hmm. like wh whoever is composing an entire cast, I would hope would be actually diverse on the backside, but whatever they're playing, I don't care, you know, like <laughs> go for it. I think that's the beauty of, of animation it, that's different than on camera. We can only go so far when we look a certain way, but. Of course. I think I had, I had a fan sort of, I think try to, almost provoke me uh on that topic it was like well well don't don't you feel like you should be able to voice anything why why, do, why should you be limited and you know my my response to that was yeah i of course i feel like i should be able to voice anybody in anything and uh if if there had been equity in casting all along mm -hmm. then 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 this wouldn't be an issue right now it's it's in the nature of 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 humans that we tend to address problems with a pendulum swing mm -hmm. you know and and right now the pendulum is swinging back in a direction that it needed to be for a long time mm -hmm. and so you know if there's a role or two that i'm not asked to read for then that's that's okay respect that 100 percent, and it also speaks to the the beautiful uh, nature that animation can affect people uh there is that clip that's gone around on tiktok and other places of pearl breaking down uh facets of black history that people did not know and <sighs> that's again that's something that the the style of animation the the format of steven universe the context of steven universe has been able to speak to so well that you know beyond that that's all the that's all I could ever ask for is that truth to come out. And it's fantastic that you were a part of that. So thank you for that. Um, oh. Of course. Um, OK, so uh, we've got Edward is cool. Ninety three has a question. William, are you like Rigby in real life? And for everyone else, are there characters that you relate to on a personal level? So we'll start with you, Bill. 
Yeah, you know, uh, Rigby is just me on too much caffeine. Uh, <laughs> But 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 I I try to sort of uh, moderate my my uh, my Rigby tendencies. Like I I won't necessarily grab the last piece of pizza. But <laughs> not necessarily. Uh, not necessarily. But uh, I'll tell you. Right right. He, Might do it, but not ne- okay. Yeah, he's but being Rigby was a blast because I got to like act out all of my worst impulses. So. <laughs> That's amazing. So I, yeah, I guess maybe I'm a okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm like <laughs> <laughs> the true confession comes. He's like, I, okay, yeah, that's true. It's I'm done, guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, come back, come back, come back. Lauren, what about you? How similar are you? Um, you know, I do relate to Amy Wong's dizziness a little bit. <laughs> that's, that's the sweetest thing. You're like maybe, maybe. Something I need to embrace, you know. Okay. Okay. I've always been a little bit like that. Um, and as I get older, I try to like you know grow into more of the wise woman. Of course. But there's a certain lightness that Amy's had. But I don't think I've been a slutty, you know. Um, <laughs> but but you know, it was a fun fun character to play, and and it you know it was a pretty uh, close to my own voice. I just made her a little bit younger, you know, when I first started doing that character. But yeah, and then Connie from um, King of the Hill, who was only twelve, right, was kind of this pulled in teenager, which was very close to how I was when I was twelve, and and I grew gotcha. up in an all white Jewish neighborhood and felt kind of like not, there was no other Asian family in the whole town. Right. So, so I really kind of related to that character too. Oh, wow. Nikki, what about you? Bless you, by the way. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sorry, not to call out your, your sneeze, but uh, what about you? Do you relate uh, a lot to Princess Samira? You know, I think that any character that I do, there's always some essence of me that's getting pulled into the character. Um, and interestingly, what I've noticed is a lot of times I'll get cast for whatever way they write it, and mm-hmm. then somehow they always end up pulling more parts of me into it as it progresses. They're like, I'm just make her a little bit more like this, and then I'll be like, oh, that's just more me. That's just more <laughs> normal me, okay? So you've like, been talking to me a bit, here. okay. Yeah. yeah, and who doesn't want to play a pr- princess or who hasn't played, you know, pretend princess you right. know, their entire lives? So it's really fun to get to be one, especially in the booth, you know, because I'm over there and I'm just like, you know, let's just make this happen. Like, <laughs> I'm just like, let it all, let it all. Here we go. And voila. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Now, Didi, you already kind of expressed that you are similar to Pearl with the sharp voice uh, when you're commanding attention. Are there other ways that you're like Pearl? Um, I guess I'm like Pearl in the way that I like things done just so. Okay. And okay. if I want things to be done my way, then I mm-hmm. have to do it my I mean, way. Uh, I have a hard time with delegating, um, you know, uh, tasks at home. But um, okay. but what I'm not like, Pearl, is that I do love to eat. <laughs> <laughs> That is fair. That is That's absolutely me, huh? fair. Yeah, yeah. Certainly in, in after 2020, yeah, eating is good. Eating is good. I know, yes. I know. I love food. <laughs> yeah. Now, Olivia, I was going to ask this question, but there's another one that popped up, and it's not voice acting related. So this one only you can really do. Uh, can you talk a bit of the process of how you were chosen to star in Conan the Destroyer? This is from Justin Grams. So yeah, this is, sure. yes. Um, one thing I just wanted to add about um, animation is I have um, the characters that I identify with the most are prepubescent boys. Um, (laughs) And um, yeah, that's kind of like a real niche. I think it's because I raised my son and I saw him go through that time period, but I haven't actually uh, gotten to play one yet uh, on air. I, I did one for a Fox pilot so that was really, really fun and, and a great challenge. Um, as far as Conan the Destroyer, that came about, gosh, you know, it was an audition and um, I had done my first film and there was some, um, a little bit of controversy about about it coming out. Um, 
and and people were sort of excited about it, but it was also kind of an edgy film. So that then got me in the door for Conan the Destroyer. Now, <laughs> incidentally, I, I had been obsessed with playing princesses since I was a little girl. I used to draw them. We had an au pair back in London called Mar Maria Nick, and she was like, oh, I'm going to paint. We are going to uh, draw princesses today, and uh, maybe one day you're going to play one. And so lo and behold, um, this opportunity came along. I, Joanna Ray, the casting director, got me in. I met with the great Richard Fleischer. And uh, my last audition was with Rafaela De Laurentiis in her wow. office uh, on the Universal lot. And she was seriously Italian, obviously. And she's like, Olivia, what is it about this character that you think is going to make, bring this princess to life? I want to know why you think you can play Jenna. And I'm like, um, well, because I think I really am a princess. At <laughs> heart. Boom. And, uh, I've dreamt of it since I was a little girl. And so I brought that joy and that dreamlike state. You know, we have dreams as children and um, mm -hmm. mine very much came into reality. And I just brought all of that into the role. Uh, the imaginary life of being regal and um, <laughs> being omnipotent. So that's sort of how that went. Oh my God. That's amazing. That is absolutely amazing. Uh, we've got a couple of comments. I hate vegetables is on here. Uh, it says all of you folks do such excellent work, giving much life to the characters you play. And I wholeheartedly agree. Uh, Eddie Thane says, Hey, from Casey, great panel guys. Glad to see you guys are all fans of each other's work, just as we are fans of you, which is absolutely yeah. true. Um, we are okay, so we're getting tight on time. So I'm gonna I'm gonna end this up with uh, two things. Okay, so the first one is kind of borrowed from TikTok, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, let's play voice actor confessions, five finger edition. So if everyone would put their hand up like this, <laughs> and every time that I say something that you're guilty of, you put a finger down. Okay, are you ready? So we're gonna see who who is standing at the end here. Okay, so put a finger down if you've ever been caught using your character voice outside of work. Dee Dee, go ahead and put your put your finger down. <laughs> <laughs> we got that one. We got that one. Okay. So uh, put your finger down if you, or put a finger down if you've mimicked a voice uh, of a character that you weren't cast for. Mm, so whether that's, okay, okay. All right. All right. Good, good admissions. Uh, put a finger down if you've ever forgotten how to hold your character's voice during a, a recording. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's amazing <laughs> put a finger down if you've ever called a castmate by their character name okay all right all right all right and uh last but not least put a finger down if you've accidentally accidentally said something inappropriate in your character's voice <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> okay. So we, yeah, I was gonna say, so we've only got a couple of people with fingers up still. Okay, so we're gonna have to we're gonna have to work on that. We're gonna have to work on that. <gasps> this has been absolutely amazing. Uh the last thing that I want to do before we get out of here is to wish a very happy belated birthday to Olivia, who had a birthday last week. Happy oh, birthday happy to birthday. you. Thank you. Thank yes, you so indeed. Much. Yes, indeed. Thank I want to give everyone an opportunity to uh, say bye to the fans. And Olivia, we'll start with you. It's just been such a pleasure in the company of all these incredible actors, um, master thespian voice actors and actors. I, It's a great honor and um, what a wonderful way to spend a Sunday. And thank you guys all so much globally, Indonesia, Europe, all over the USA, all over the globe. I think this is an opportunity for us to all come together and uh, be joyful and laugh and um, and get to know each other a little better. Absolutely, absolutely. Lauren? Oh, I just want to say thank you as well to everybody out there who's been a supporter of one of my shows and all of the, the shows on this panel. It's been so fun to get to know some of you. I've met, um, I think I've met Olivia once before really quick, um, yes. but uh, I just, you guys have no idea how much you lift us up. And so uh, really thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And um, and you do have like a week to go. And, and I, I just want to put in a really quick little plug. Um, my proceeds are going to Homeboy Industries, um, which is a, an organization that I've supported for 
more than a decade. They're, they do amazing work. And if you want to help support them, that would be just so wonderful. So, course, and I do that because it just makes me feel so good. It's not like, oh, I'm really like, oh, so like good person. I just love the way that it makes me feel just like right now. Yes. So thank you very much. Thank you. Didi? Oh, I just want to say thank you so much for having me on this panel with all of you. Uh, thank you to all the fans who have uh, who are tuning in, who have supported. Um, I miss you guys. I miss face to face convention. I miss just being in the room with people. This is also just a nice way too to connect, and I'm grateful for it. Uh, I just want to encourage everybody to spread love and joy and kindness to everyone. Absolutely. And uh, I love you guys. <laughs> Thank you, Nikki. Well, can I just ditto everybody? I mean, <laughs> everything that everyone says is just so amazing, but I guess I'll reiterate and, there you, go. you know, say I, I feel very honored to be on a panel with such amazing talent. Because to me, sometimes I'm like, I got really lucky. Somehow I ended up with a job in voice acting and I, <sighs> You know, I don't know. I don't know if I count, um, oh, but this is actually count. my first um, animation panel, like for me bring, being brought on for my voice. So thank you all for um, letting me share this screen with you and for everybody who has tuned in and, and supported, because I think, you know, as everyone has kind of mentioned, you guys are such a huge part of the motivation to like keep creating uh, because getting these moments to connect with you is like one of the best moments of why we do what we do is to see people that appreciate the work that we do and to hear and connect and talk with them. I, it, it is the most fulfilling. It is one of the most fulfilling parts for sure. And I really loved what Lauren did. And since I'm going to, I was like, that is such a great idea. I'm going to make my proceeds go to my favorite nonprofit. Which is uh, they're called uh, Awaken Arts, and it uh, we teach art to at-risk youth as a tool for healing and as an outlet of positive expression. Awesome. So instead of you know ending up um, dropping out of school or in the jail system or on the streets or doing whatever they're doing, they can transform those talents into a, a more productive and creative way that can benefit them and society. Um, so. A really quick question. Can you put the, those two um, charities on the YouTube comments? So we will definitely add those to the chat. Yeah, absolutely. I think that is so amazing. I mean, yes. I, this, is not, this whole thing for me is about connecting and it is about spreading kindness and love and goodness, just as Didi said. And so I, I really like that whole thing. So I'm going to do that That's anytime awesome. I'm on a panel like this. I want to do that exact thing. So thank you all for having me and for being a part of my first um, animation panel. <laughs> you did fabulously. Yeah. Bill? Yeah, I, uh, you know, I'm going to echo everybody. But it, the thing of it is, uh, <laughs> the people on this panel represent so much talent from so many great things that I have enjoyed so much of my life uh, that it is kind of amazing to find myself in their company. And I also just want to say that it's really cool that it is so, uh, the panel was so uh, uh, female heavy, that it was that, that yes. we've got four women here. Uh, you know, it's just, it's just really cool because it's kind of unusual, you know? That's true. That's true. And it, and it, and it shouldn't be. But uh, thank you guys so much uh, for letting me be a part of it. And uh, the only thing that I would plug, um, coming up uh, sometime, I think around June, they're going to come out with... Um, uh, Back for Blood, which is uh, the video game. It's a spiritual successor to Left for Dead, which everybody was nice. uh, uh, pretty excited about. And, and I get to be one of the main player characters in that, a uh, guy by the name of Hoffman. So uh, so look look for it and come hunt zombies with me. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, I just want to echo everything you all said and say thank you for sharing your time, your energy, your light, your talent with all of us. Uh, this has been an absolute adventure and I've loved every bit of it. Thanks to Wizworld for bringing us together. Uh, don't forget, if you're watching live now or a replay later on Twitch, Facebook, YouTube, uh, we've got paid celebrity events next week. So all those things drop on the 7th. So you have until the 6th of February to sign up for the private one-on-one video chat 
hats, autographs, all those cool things. So please sign up for those at wizworldvirtual.com. Once again, I'm Victor Dangerous, the hardest working man in comics, saying thank you for spending the weekend with us. You guys have a wonderful time, and we will see you next time. Bye! Bye! God bless you guys! Thank you for watching this video. I am Invader Zim, and I traffic in doom! And so, if you do not subscribe to this channel, you will have doom that befalls you by me, Invader Zim.